All right, hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about your final two reflection papers. Um, begin writing them and probably soon after your life form paper is finished. Um, and in fact, watching this video will probably give you some ideas uh, for your life form paper on just how to integrate these different persuasive frameworks that we've talked about in the second half of the course. So here are the assignments in short. They're found in the assignment description sheet. Uh, this one here, the reflection paper accompanying your life form paper. The first two pages or so can be probably more or less identical to what you did in your reflection paper for that rhetorical analysis, where you said, here's how I organized my paper, here's what I thought an effective introduction would be. And you talk about your, your choices, what you did, what information you chose, why you organized it the way you did, those type of things. Uh, and everybody did a nice job on the first one. However, I want you to save some space for um, and you can see this one is a little bit longer than the first one. I want you to save some space to address some very specific issues for this assignment, just to make sure that I can understand what you were doing if I can't see it in your paper, uh, where I can see you applying the persuasive concepts from the articles that we read. And this would be the Moser, the Moser and Dilling, the Lacerowitz, and the TED Talks Moral Psychology. Um, those would be the major things that we read that you would apply from. So. Um, We'll put that on hold for a second. If we just look at a real quick breakdown of what you want to do inside of this reflection paper, the one attached to your life form paper, um, note that I do have questions to help you out on D2L, even though I think these models you're about to see will help you the most. But the questions I have placed um, inside of our space where you'll post your rough drafts. I just didn't know where else to put them, and it seemed like an obvious space because as soon as you post your rough draft, maybe you've got a little downtime, and you can start working on this life form reflection on your choices that you made for organization and the rhetorical frameworks you used. So you've got a lot of stuff here, or at least some stuff here, uh, that I put to help you out. So know that that is there. That is important. Um, but what are you going to include in here? Uh, as I said, similar to your first reflection paper, structure, organization, thesis, major argument, all that type of stuff that you would get from any writing assignment and any writing class or just any class. But now the specifics that I really want to hear about in the last, I don't know, three pages for sure of your uh, reflection paper to make sure that you've got space to talk about it all, probably about three pages. Remember, you've got to argue through a human health framework in your paper. I put public health as well, but just how is this not just good for the environment, saving you if you're a great white shark or a tuna fish or an egret or whatever you are? Um, how are you not just good for your own sake or for environmental health, but for human health? There's some attachment there as well. And that is one that you were required to use because, you know, it's, as you know from our course readings, um, it's a major persuasive framework, not just for the environment, but for all public issues, right? This is really what persuades people that may not care much about your issue otherwise. Um, and it's just good critical thinking, too, goes without saying. Plus, you need three other frameworks drawn from those articles. Uh, you also need one counter argument. So I would like you to talk about this framework, the human public health framework, and how you did it plus your three other frameworks, plus your one counter argument. So I'm just going to say that's probably five paragraphs for sure. One paragraph per strategy. One here, there's the next three paragraphs for your other frameworks, and then also for your counter argument. Um, I should be able to see your counter argument if you choose not to include your counter argument. I'm sure I can find it. Um, but you could talk about your counter argument and why you included the counter argument you did. There's many counter arguments you could include um, from many different communities, political, business, other activist groups. There's ma many types of counter arguments you could include and then shoot down in your paper. Right. Um, so why did you include the one you did? Why did that seem like the best one? That'd be an interesting thing to talk about in your reflection paper. So you can see that the goals for this one, a little bit about your organization and when the information you chose, but much more so about your, your frameworks. All right. Here's some other frameworks that you could choose. I just jotted down. You can read those. But what I'd like you to see is I've written up an example here of what I might talk about if for just one framework. And I really sort of went big on this one in the example. Will you say this much in all of your potentially five paragraphs? Maybe not. Um, but it's the first one you might need to talk about the most because you've got the most to say about it and you're referencing a lot of your information for the first time. Let me get this lined up here. 
So here's what I said. This is if I was writing on uh, being drinking water. Here's what I chose for my life form. Um, and so I just wrote up a little thing here. I say, I used the emotional sequence from Moser, page 70. So I'm saying where it came from. What one is that? Well, first notice that I cited it. I want you to cite which one you're using too. You can just cite the TED Talks and point out which specific aspects you're using. If it's fairness and equality or loyalty or whatever it might be, you can just say that and that would be fine. Um, notice I'm not including quotations or anything. I just need some type of reference so I know where your idea came from in the readings, which framework you're using. Turns out that the one I'm referencing is, should look familiar, we talked about a lot in one of the videos, this list right here. So what I'm going to do is break down my writing and show that I did these things inside of there. And so that's what I'm doing for the rest of my paragraph here. If you read this, I'm going through and saying, in this, this could be one long paragraph. I broke it into three so you could all read it easier. Um, but this section here is just saying, I did the first thing. I made people feel vulnerable to the risk. And as we all know, that is the first part of the theory, right? And so I say how I did this in this sort of imaginary paper that I wrote where I'm, I'm drinking water, in, as I said in mine. And so I included famous episodes of bad drinking water in the problems from southern Louisiana in the 90s and New York State in the 1970s and my imaginary paper here. But that's enough of a reference. I don't have to say much more than that. I'll have read your paper. If you just reference what you did for evidence, great. Now you've got the scientific stuff, but it is being used inside of the emotional vulnerability risk framework. And so that's a great explanation of the choices you made, right? Uh, I say then, I'm going back to more bullet points from Moser, that next I did uh, the next part of it, which is have specific information and give precautionary actions. And I say how I did that in the paper, the type of things I said, right? Um, and you will want to do the same thing. Actually give the evidence that you have done this. Just don't say you did it. I want to see you at least reference where you did it in the paper. Because I'll read these side by side. I'll read your life form paper first and think about it a bit. And then, you know, if I have any questions on your use of the framework in particular, I'm going to go into this reflection paper and say, well, where are these four frameworks that were required for this assignment? And your job here is to point them out where you use them. So you do want to reference where you think you're do using these frameworks, where you're doing these things. It's going to be incredibly helpful. So if you want to model on how to do that, just take a look at mine. I'll let you read this one too. I just lined up the rest of these bullet points from Moser, these guys down here. And, um, and that's what's happening in this part of the paragraph, right? All right. So I, what you should really just do is, um, I'm not going to put this up online, so just pause the video and read through this model and you can see how this works. All right. So where do we go from there? I didn't write up all four. You will have four paragraphs essentially because you need four frameworks, right? Um, here, this might be all you need to say later in the piece if you're working with the same information. I said for my second framework, arguing that a relation, there's a relationship to human health, not just environmental health, that is the required framework. I suggested how I might have done this here, and I dropped in again some different places in my paper where in my imaginary paper I talked about these things. You'll be talking about real things in your real paper. Um, and how I connected it back to certain issues and medical problems. Therefore, there's my connection to human health, right? Um, from there, that's all I had to say, and I kind of proved my point. And for me, as your as your professor, as your reader, this is enough, again, to probably cue me for some types of frameworks. And you don't have to give me everything you did, but you gave me that this happened. I want you to prove that you did this, evidence from your paper that you did this, and that I'm happy. Um, because not, every, not all of your information may be through one of these frameworks from class. You might just have information, and that's fine, too. All right, here's the third one. I kind of blended two strategies from that Lacerowitz article that we read on interpretive communities. And he said, uh, highlight the local and the regional and make the impact immediate, right? And so I blended those two into one, and I just discussed how my, in my imaginary paper here, I did that through the content that I chose. So you can see again here, I offered a, a fair amount of explanation of how that happened. So to cover these one, two, three strategies, I probably wrote a good two pages, maybe even three pages to do that. And I've got most of it taken care of, though. So I'd have to talk about a fourth one. And if I wanted to, um, I could also talk about counter argument, right? The other thing that's in there. So um, this is from 
the screen you're looking at right here is from the actual assignment description from the life form paper. This is where I break it down simple. So this is a nice final checklist. So you can look at this as a checklist right here. There's three persuasive strategies plus the human health one up here, right? And so I covered most of those just now in about two to three pages in my reflection here. And I'll want you to, to do the same. You should have about the same amount of, I don't know, we'll call it density, I guess, in your information and how much evidence you're providing and linking. One thing in terms of writing, notice that I opened up each paragraph just to make life simple in terms of the rhetorical framework that I borrowed from our readings, TED Talk, Lacerowitz, Moser, whatever it is. I set that up first and just said, here's what it is. To help you all out, I put it in bold. You don't have to do that. Um, but you can see it, and then I just, that's my claim basically, and here's my evidence, which is me citing my own paper in that I did these things. You'll want to do the same. That'll make your life easy. All right, let's talk about the other reflective paper real quick. Right below the life form instructions as your other major reflection paper due at the end of the course. This one I did a little differently. I put two pages single spaced. I imagined it might kind of more like a letter or something. It's very conversational, much as these are. Um, if you want to do four single spaced, whatever, it should be in the end about, I don't know, 900 words, a thousand words, somewhere in that range, and that'll be fine. This one is how to use these concepts on persuasion in your future. Um, I won't go through everything that this assignment is doing. You can go ahead and read this. It's online. This is just in the assignment descriptions, of course. But here are the main things we want to talk about. What are the groups or populations you're going to work with in the future? Groups, communities, publics uh, that you're going to work with after college, or maybe that you're already working with now in an internship or job related to your field, something like this. Could be social activism as well. It doesn't have to be professional. But how are you going to use some of these strategies from class to reach these people? Um, this is what I want you thinking about because, again, it's the end of the course. Uh, I hope that you appreciated, you know, the environmental framework and the public framework. Um, even if you don't remember all of the environmental stuff that we did or that you learned for your life form paper, the big takeaway here is the improving of your writing skills, new strategies for your writing skills, and these public persuasive frameworks, especially the ones we spent time on in the second half of the course. So. Here's just a little sample paragraph I wrote up. Yours will be longer than this, but I sort of tackled one paragraph, so to speak. Go ahead and give this a read. Uh, this is actually based on my life. Um, you know, one thing I do for the university is I work with a number of groups and serve on committees. And one thing that I do is I often work with committees that serve at-risk students, particularly first-generation students. And one thing I've learned when I sat down to think about this and reflect on it a bit and how I might use these and, and do use these frameworks from course, the course, um, I thought of how many of my colleagues are very, very logical, probably because they're academics, and they give logical answers to why you shouldn't drop out of college. But as we know from this course, uh, logic isn't everything, and it may not even be the best answer. So I imagine, well, what, is it, what would it look like if I use that emotional framework from Moser that we've talked about a bunch of times in a few videos? What would that look like if I tried to use that to talk to at-risk students, or even to train my colleagues to talk to at-risk students? And so what, what I wrote up here is just a simple paragraph paragraph based upon that. And you'll see that what I do in here again is I basically use the bullet points, the major ideas from Moser, and I went through and said, here are the things that I would probably do with Moser's article. Those bullet points, there they are again, they're famous at this point. Uh, what if I sat down to talk to an at-risk student, somebody in a marginalized population that, you know, didn't have a great chance of graduating no matter how much they want to graduate there's a lot of cultural interference in college graduating uh, graduation rates um, and so i thought okay here's what might happen so just read this and this is the type of thing that i'm looking for um, i don't have that much more control over it you really know yourself best the groups you're working with but i hope you sit down and sincerely think about what these people will need in the future because that will be the biggest takeaway from the course that is the good that you will do for the world is when you work for these groups and learn that the the natural frameworks that you might think of first to use or even that your organization uses might not be the only frameworks and might not be the best frameworks so maybe in my case to keep people in school um, i need to use an emotional framework make them feel vulnerable at risk now, um, not by being in college but by dropping out of college right and, and what i put here is i would probably engage them in a conversation to and ask them what is the biggest risk or where, why are you most vulnerable if you leave college? That should make them want to stay, right? Uh, and so I would frame the discussion that way. I would let them fill in the gaps. I would then give them some simple things that they could do. Um, 
And that would basically be the use of the emotional framework. So give this a read. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, we're almost out of time. But if you do this, you know, two, three, four times with different populations or different frameworks, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And again, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to connect the course to your life, which is the most important thing. So I hope you enjoyed the course. Uh, if you need anything as the course finishes up, please send me an email. Uh, otherwise, I enjoyed uh, the course and I hope you did as well. Thank you.